Hey, what's the good word, everybody? I'm Noah from Techno Buffalo, and this is the Inspire 4G from AT&T and HTC. It all rhymes. ATT 4G HTC. It's the uh, newest Android phone. It drops, I believe, on February 13th. Ironically enough, the same day you can start pre-ordering the Motorola Atrix 4G, which, uh, you know, frankly, in a nutshell here, this is a really nice phone, but I would imagine the Atrix is going to overshadow it in the stores because it's all whiz bang laptop dock craziness stuff but that being said hundred bucks on contract gets you a lot more these days than it did five years ago when i started in this business ninety nine dollars on contract of course we all know that the contract part costs you way more than the upfront cost and also a lot of times you can get these ones cheaper from a third party than from the carrier store but you know so what for the sake of the review ninety nine dollars on contract android 2.2 the newest version of htc sense 4g is it any good let's find out All right, so here's the phone, the uh, Inspire 4G. Again, $99 on two-year contract uh, when it drops. I believe it's February 13th. And, um, you know, in a nutshell, it's a really, really solid Android device. If you like the form factor, the big 4.3-inch screen, uh, really, well, the only thing you're missing here that might, I think, be really important right now is a front-facing camera if you'd like to do the video chat and the self-portrait and stuff. Uh, otherwise, you know... Uh, it's a single core processor and there are dual core phones coming out, but most people aren't going to need that. This phone's plenty responsive. You know, everything that I've, I've done with it, web browsing and email and everything else, you know, works just fine. Uh, the HTC Sense system is nice. It's got the HSPA Plus, uh, AT&T's first, quote, 4G HSPA Plus device, which I'll, get, I'll talk about that in a second. It's got Wi-Fi on the back. You've got an 8 megapixel camera, 720p HD video, dual LED flash. I uh, just did a little bit with it. Didn't have a chance to, you know, do a whole lot of uh, video recording and all that kind of stuff. But it works, you know, it works well. The photos are solid. I've got a photo here that I, uh, I took this morning of some new sneakers I got. Unfortunately, they're a half size too small. Nike changed their sizing since... Uh, last time I got shoes. But anyway, just to show you, you know, the pinch and zoom, it's very responsive, and uh, the photo came out well. I, I emailed this to a friend and then, you know, saw it in my sent folder when I looked on a big monitor on a computer, and, you know, a pretty good photo for when I just took quickly. You can see kind of the detail there in the cardboard box. You know, I'm not a photographer per se, but uh, definitely a pretty good phone. You've got the GPS, I mean, pretty good camera, rather, for a phone. The GPS built in with geotagging, you know, all that stuff you're used to from a high-end device. Uh, HTC Sense, you know, works really well. You've got your multiple home screens and your kind of overview. You can pinch in to get your overview thing and then, you know, click on whichever screen you want to go to. All the widgets, the uh, HTC widgets as well as the Android widgets. Um, you know, there's the HTC clock with the animated weather, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, it, it's really good. Their, their new new version of Sense has a few little, few little uh, additions, including the Find My Phone service, uh, online backup tied into the, the web, website you can log into remotely to manage your phone and find it if it's lost or stolen. That's pretty cool. And you've got this personalized button, which gives you kind of quick access to the settings and customizations that people, you know, most people will want to use. And this is something that's nice if you're, you know, kind of a power user. You can get it set up quickly. You can set up your own scenes and your own, uh, you know, a scene is a combination of a wallpaper, apps, and w app shortcuts and widgets on your home screens. Um, and then you've got also, you know, sound sets, which are similar, but for, for sounds. And so that's cool. You know, power users can set this all up to jump between different, you know, sets and, and settings. And then for a novice user, you know, this is cool because it makes it a little bit easier, a little more user-friendly um, than stock Android, at least in my opinion. Uh, and I'll talk more about that in a second because I have a gripe still. I, there's just some things about Android I just, that really bug me. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. Uh, one thing I like about Android is the notifications bar. And then you've got also the customizable LED notification light. Not on right now because I've ignored my new emails for long enough. It's not on anymore. But uh, again, you know, overall, solid, solid device. I think when the Atrix comes out, like I said, it, it may overshadow with all the, the dual core and, and all the, the HDMI out and the accessories and all that. And, you know, probably more of a marketing blitz. But, but this is a solid device. And, um, you know, it's not super lightweight, but it's not overly heavy. It's thin enough, solidly constructed. Um, the battery cover is a giant pain in the neck. I've always been a massive fail at battery covers. My whole illustrious half-decade career covering the mobile industry. Uh, for some reason, battery covers and I do not get along. But this one particularly bad, and I've talked to other people reviewing this phone who said the same thing. As you can see, I, I 
mangled this thing trying to get it open. I used a, a coin and a fingernail and a screwdriver and everything I could think of to try to get this thing open. I finally did, but I messed it all up. And then you've got a separate uh, mechanism down here for the SIM card and micro SD slot. You know, most people won't have to access these things very often, and that's good because solidly constructed, you know, feels great in the hand, stays in place once it's there. But man, just a bear, and not in the good way to, uh, to deal with those things. Uh, another thing I really like about HTC is uh, their on-screen keyboard. So I'll show you real quick. I love uh, Android Voice Search, one of my favorite things, voice commands. Search for a big pizza pie. Look at that. Search for a big pizza pie. I mean, it, that, that's fantastic. Um, so when you're typing, I think, I think HTC's keyboard, on-screen keyboard, is uh, one of the best ones out there. Um, it works in, uh, you know, in landscape and portrait modes. Uh, I really like their predict system, which as you're typing, you know, gives you the options right there, and it's easy to customize the dictionary. Uh, of course, that one was so far off. You know? It gives you your, your autocomplete options and everything, and just really nice, easy to type on. The nice big screen, the 4.3-inch screen, makes it even easier to type on, which is great. Um, but a couple of the negatives. Uh, so for me, uh, AT&T service notoriously, you know, lots of complaints in the San Francisco Bay Area. And I, my office where I work in, in Oakland, California, where I film most of these videos and everything, has really bad cell phone service across the board. But AT&T and T-Mobile, the GSM carriers, are worse than the CDMA carriers right here. So I know it's kind of a dead spot. That being said, this phone dropped uh, three calls, uh, the same call three times, actually, this afternoon. Um, and uh, another call once when I tried to call call somebody, I got a fail right away, and I had to call again. So that's not you know necessarily the fault of this device, but uh, just to say you know AT and T still having its problems in some parts of the country, and other in other parts it's great, but out here the problems continue. Uh, and the HSPA Plus, you know I've got two bars of HSPA Plus right now, so not you know particularly great, but the speeds where I am haven't been all that great. Uh, but again. That's, you know, the, the issue more with uh, the coverage right here in, in my home office. I was using it uh, earlier today, um, had to go somewhere and not using it while in the car, because don't use your phone while you're driving, but I uh, used it, you know, when I got there and the speeds were a little bit better. Obviously, it has Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi works great, uh, so there you go. A um, couple other, you know, little niggles, which are, are as much about Android as anything else. Uh, Android is just too complicated still. It's too complicated for the average person to, to really get the most out of. I know, you know, for, for tech enthusiasts, for Android fans, for all that, absolutely, I know this doesn't necessarily apply to you. And, uh, you know, it's so customizable. It's great with the widgets and, you know, the notification customizations and everything and the shortcut apps and all that stuff. Absolutely fantastic. The notifica notification system is great. Um, you know, all these widgets you can add. Um, but you get a device like this, and, you know, on the one hand, HTC has done a great job of making things easier to use. On the other hand, it's more complicated. For instance, I've got the HTC Mail app, and then the Gmail app also. Now, this didn't come with the Gmail app uh, widget, you know, or app shortcut, rather, on the home screen. I had that myself, because I couldn't set up my company email via the Mail app. It just, I couldn't get it to work. And so then I went into the Gmail app and it was able to parse it no problem. And so, you know, why do I need both? Or, you know, even worse, somebody who's not as tech savvy as me, the average consumer is going to see this and think, you know, why are there both of these here? Maybe they won't ever find the Gmail, or maybe they'll try the mail and it won't work with their account, and then they'll wonder what's going on. So, you know, things like that. Other things, uh, even more egregious, I think, because that's kind of a, a specific example where my account, you know, my email account wouldn't work with the, the HTC Mail app, but the personalize menu, right? So this is great and everything. Two things that I tried to change right out of the bat. One, my notifications were set up where the phone would make noise. There'd be a notification tone when I got new email. I wanted to turn that off immediately because I get so much email, there's no point in having that happen. Uh, it took me so long to figure out how to do this. Again, I'm tech savvy, I'm used to phones, but I haven't used an Android phone. I used one, the Galaxy S, for a little while, but not many in the last several months, and not an HTC Android phone in a while. So it was kind of like starting from scratch with being a tech savvy person, and I was like, well, how do I do it? I went to uh, Soundset. That's not going to do it. That's a whole bunch of prepackaged sounds, and you can't change stuff there. 
you could set up I could set up a new sound set. I could create a brand new one, but I never thought to actually do that, you know, and that's I don't want to create a new sound set. I just want to turn off the email ringer. So then I went to ringtone, not there. Then I went to notification sound. You'd think, oh, that would do it, right? So email, great. So all right, I'm going to go in and, uh, well, default, alpha, get more, blah, blah. Where's the one for off or silent? Not in there. What I wound up having to do was I had to go all the way back into my mail program. And then from inside my account, I had to hit the menu button on the bottom, which Android users will know, you know, you can always hit the menu button and, and half the time you'll get, you know, more options. Sometimes you won't. But then from in there, I had to go to more, and from more settings, and then inside of settings, there's email notifications where you can change the ringtone, the vibrate, notify ones, and in ringtone, there, now I have a silent option. That's, you know, drilling down way too far in general for such a, I would think, a highly important thing that a lot of people are going to want to mess around with especially when the phone's set by default out of the box, at least mine was, to ring, ring, ring every time I get a new email. And who wants that? Just wait. Too, it's buried too far, and it's not with the rest of the sounds. And that just doesn't make any sense. Uh, similar thing with turning off the haptic feedback when I was typing on the on-screen keyboard. Not where I expected it to be. Just there are too many things like that. That, And it's not just Android. You know, it's technology in general and gadgets and stuff. But Android in particular in the mobile phone space, there's so much you can do with it. But, but it's like they need to run it through the common sense filter one more time to, to make it easier for, the, for just, you know, smartphones are becoming such big business. So many people are buying them and they're getting, it's like that saying that you only use 10% of your brain. I think people only use like 5% of their smartphones because they're just, they're just too complicated and too hard to use. Anyway, my little rant being over, you know, that's kind of my, my two biggest negatives here on the device are, uh, you know, the, the difficulty of certain setup and customization features, and then at and service. Uh, the HSPA Plus, you know, I ran, um, where is it? I ran uh, speed test earlier, and again, you know, where I am um, uh, is not good, right? So I know that, uh, but it was just kind of funny. Here, I'll run it side by side just for fun with an iPhone 4, uh, both, you know, with uh, Wi-Fi off and... Um, sorry, I just got a text message. Both of them with Wi-Fi off, just off the uh, cellular network. And, you know, these results, your mileage may vary, and I hope it does, because these results were just pitiful. That being said, HSPA was faster. Sorry about the glare here overhead. Uh, we'll begin test on both of them. And this, you know, not the device's fault, and not the fault of uh, HTC. And, you know, where you live... Even for me, if I went, you know, four blocks away, it'd probably be better. But I'm just going to show you this because it's kind of funny. So this is a little bit better, actually, than I was getting earlier. Uh, I got 983 down. I got 1.5 down on the iPhone. Interesting. Earlier, the results were, were reversed, but much, much worse. I got 300 up on the Inspire 0.9, or 90, to say. Uh, you know, 1.5 up, 0.9 down. Or 1.5 down, 0.9 up, sorry, with 387 milliseconds ping on the iPhone. And then 983 down, 307 up with 307 ping latency on the Inspire. So the Inspire faster all the way around, except for download. Interesting. Let's try that one more time just for the heck of it. Again, don't use these, these results as anything other than just may as well test it because I'm doing the review. Because the coverage, like I said, is really bad where I am. So what are we getting now? There you go, a little bit better. 1.4 down on the Aspire. You know, this being said, just to be fair, on uh, Verizon using their 4G modem the other day in this same exact building where I am, uh, I did. I I was consistently getting at least 12 down, and at one point I got 21 down. I got basically, uh, you know. 10 times as fast. So anyway, I'm talking about uh, 21 megabytes down. So it would be like 21,000 instead of 14 for whatever that's worth. Anyway, so all right, iPhone 1.08 down, 1.04 up, and then on the uh, Aspire 1.4 down, 0.3 up. So again, you know where I am, it's very sketchy. There you go. Enough of that though. Just to kind of recap here, um, 
Spire 4G, 99 bucks on contract. It's a solid, solid Android device. I like HTC's customization. I still think there's work to be done on Android in general, and even HTC in the personalization, there's some things that are too hard to find. But all in all, it's a nice phone, very responsive. Big screen makes it easier to type on, solid camera with HD capture, and uh, you know, if you don't need a dual core processor, and you don't need a front facing camera, and you don't need a slide out QWERTY keyboard, this is a great option to look at for an Android phone, and a lot of you know this is basically the, the US version of the HTC Desire HD. So if you're not in the US and you're interested in this, check out the Desire HD. There you go. You know what? For a not full review, that sure was uh, 15 minutes plus of me yapping. But what can I tell you? It's how I do things. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for checking it out. Don't forget to check out Techno Buffalo's coverage of the Palm, HP Palm WebOS event. And, uh, and then, you know, Mobile World Congress in Barcelona is starting on Sunday, February 13th. I'll be over there, a bunch of press conferences, Sunday evening Barcelona time, uh, morning and afternoon U.S. time. But uh, I'm headed over there Friday because it's a long, long flight from where I am. So John will have more with the Atrix, or the Atrix, the Inspire, the Atrix coming soon, all that stuff. Till then, my name's Noah. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Oh, by the way, thanks AT&T for loaning us the phone. Bye-bye.